This is Dave VE3OI and this is an update video to my Ionisond project which I'm um, using the radar approach to probe the, uh, the, the ionosphere. So what the purpose of this project is is to determine uh, NVIS openings and as well to perform an Ionisond where you could determine what the maximum usable frequency is. So basically what the approach I'll be using is that I will send a signal up to the F layer, that signal will be returned and will be captured by a receiver. So the time that it takes uh, from the time it transmits to the time it uh, is received, knowing the speed of light, light I can calculate the height of uh, the, uh, the ionosphere. So the first phase of the project is going to be just determining whether a signal gets reflected back, i.e. there's an NVIS opening. And I won't be uh, probing, determining the height of um, the F layer, I just want to see whether there's a return signal, because if there's a return signal, it means NVIS is uh, possible. So what I want to focus in on this video is, what is the minimum time to switch over between transmit and receive? So I'll have my transmitter turned on, transmitting a signal, and it's going to be transmitting a signal, and then at some point I have to turn the receiver on. And uh, in this graphic here I'm showing that, you know, um, during the upward journey I'm going to turn over the receive, the, uh, the receiver, but I don't know how long, what that time is, how long it's going to take for me to transmit and switch over to uh, receive. So one of the things I have to do is I have to determine the time budget. What's the minimum amount of time I have that I need to switch over between receive and transmit. So the way that can be done, I know the height of the F layer is approximately 150 kilometers. I know the speed of light is roughly 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So a one-way trip for a signal to go up to the F layer is given by that equation and it comes out to be half a, a millisecond, so 500 microseconds. The round trip time will be double that. That's the time to go up and return back, ignoring any delay that the F layer takes to uh, reflect that signal or refract that signal uh, back. So uh, I'll, I have a budget of one millisecond. So my, my uh, switch over from transmit to receive must must be less than one milliseconds. So what are some factors for a switching from transmit to receive? One is how long I have the transmitter on for. So how long I'm going to be transmitting uh, the signal. Next is the decay. How long it takes for the signal to decay out of the transmitter. So once I turn the transmitter off how long does it take for that signal to decay such that I can turn on the uh, receiver? Next is the actual switch over time. How long does it take for me to switch from transmit to receive? And finally the last is the ramp up time, what I call the ramp up time. And that's basically the time it takes for a signal to enter the receiver to the point at which I can detect it. So there's going to be a ramp up time where the signal increases and I need to find out how much time it takes for the signal to ramp ramp, ramp up. So in this video I'll be doing some tests the, to determine what the switchover is from transmit to receive. So I'm going to test the propagation delay of um, a signal through the receiver prototype board I've built. This is the second prototype board I've built. So what I've got here is I've got a pin diode uh, connected to the antenna port which is controlled by an Arduino and the Arduino supplies a control voltage that turns the pin diode uh, on and off. 
So I've got my scope probe number two here connected to that voltage and the scope is going to trigger on that voltage. And uh, the signal goes through a series of uh, low noise amplifier, bandpass filter mixer, and uh, some more low noise amplifiers and a crystal filter. And the output from the crystal filter is fed to a low noise amplifier. And my uh, probe number one of my scope is connected to that uh, low noise amp amplifier. So the what I'll do is I'll trigger on the um, on turning on the uh, uh, pin diode and uh, measure the time it takes for the signal to reach uh, scope probe one. So I've got my scope connected and I have got uh, it set to uh, a single trace so it's going to capture one sweep across the um, scope and right now I've got it set so it's at two milliseconds per division so it's going to capture uh, quite a lot of uh, data so now I'm going to turn on the uh, signal uh, that's going to feed into the antenna port of the uh, receiver and then generate a local oscillator to the mixer and then uh, turn on the uh, control voltage for the pin diode So right there you can see the you can see here the control voltage rising up for the uh, the pin diode to turn the pin diode on so right at that point the pin diode is turned on so I've got a cursor set there at the point where the pin diode turns on and then I've got another cursor here uh, set so right at that point that's when the uh, the scope starts seeing a signal uh, emerging out of the receiver and uh, that's about um, that's about 800 microseconds so uh, if you look at when the signal reaches a fairly strong value right at that point it's about 1.4 microsecond 1.4 milliseconds and for it to reach the peak uh, value right there that's about 3.1 milliseconds so it takes quite a bit of time for a signal to propagate through the receiver so as it turns out the majority of that time we uh, measured for a signal to propagate through the receiver is due to the signal going through the crystal filter so what I've done I've got my channel two here the trigger channel connected to the input of the crystal filter and I've got channel one connected to the output of the low noise amplifier which is connected to the crystal filter that way we'll be able to see the signal entering and how long it takes for the signal to exit so I've got my scope set up here once again for a signal trace mode and uh, it's going to trigger on channel two which is the uh, the input to the um, uh, crystal filter and then channel one here which is the yellow channel is going to be the signal coming out of the uh, crystal filter so I'm going to go ahead and enable uh, the signals to go through the receiver here so there we go so as you can see we're getting that same pattern here um, that's coming out of the, uh, the, the crystal filter and so I'm going to move my cursor here to right where the purple signal comes up that's when the signal is uh, entering the uh, uh, crystal filter and then let's see right at that point that's right at that point there that's when the signal is uh, just emerging out of the uh, low noise amplifier and again it's 840 microseconds and uh, for the signal to come up to you know an appreciable value there it's about 1 1.5 1 1.5 uh, milliseconds or so and for the signal to come up to full strength is around there so it's around 3.9 you know 3.2 so it's well over three milliseconds 
it takes for that signal to ramp up to uh, full strength. So this is the transmitter prototype board that I built and what I'd like to do is I'd like to complete some tests to measure the time it takes for a signal to make it through the transmitter as well as the time it takes for a signal to dissipate so the, the transmitter is turned off and how long it takes for that signal to dissipate through the the amplifier so at the heart of the um, transmitter board here is the Kitson Parts 5 watt amplifier and that's mounted to the board as a module and the input to the amplifier is being controlled by a pin diode which is being controlled by the Arduino so the Arduino feeds a control voltage to the pin diode which turns that pin diode on that pin diode is connected to an input port which is then connected to my uh, SI5351 so that's that's the oscillator port so the output of the amplifier is uh, branches and it connects to a receiver port which will be connected to the receiver and then it's also connected to a low pass filter which is connected to my antenna port here and right now the antenna port is just connected to a dummy load so what I have is I have the uh, channel uh, 2 of my uh, scope connected to the uh, control voltage for the a pin diode so that'll trigger the scope and I've got a scope probe 1 here connected to the output of the um, um, low pass filter so that way uh, when I enable the amplifier I'll be able to measure the propagation time of a signal through the transmitter so I've got my scope set up for a single trace mode so it's gonna it's gonna capture one trace across and uh, it's set for two uh, milliseconds per division and so scope probe 2 which is purple is connected to the to the TX control voltage uh, for the pin diode and uh, scope probe 1 is connected to the output of the low pass uh, filter so now I'm going to generate um, a signal that's going to be fed into the oscillator port and then I'm going to enable the uh, pin diode. So there we go. So here you could see the voltage, the control voltage for the pin diode rising up. So at that point, the uh, transmitter is turned on. And here you can see the, the signal uh, coming out right here. There's no signal coming out of the low pass filter. And right here, you see the full signal that's coming out of the low pass filter. So if we if we put our cursors, so my first cursor, I'll put it right at the rising edge of the control voltage, and then the second cursor goes over to when the output voltage comes up there, and you can see it's about 400 microseconds. So it takes about 400 microseconds for a signal to propagate through the amplifier. So to measure the time it's going to take for the signal to bleed through the amplifier, once I disable, I turn off the pin diode and I turn off the oscillator, how long it takes for a signal to bleed uh, through the uh, uh, transmitter, all I have to do is basically trigger on the falling edge of my pin diode, and that should give, give me the time it takes for the signal to disappear. So I've got my scope again set to single trace mode and I have got it set to trigger on channel 2 the falling edge so that's going to capture the control voltage dropping so it will be turning off the pin diode and then channel 1 is connected again to the uh, output of the low noise amplifier so I'm going to go ahead and disable the signal here so, so there you can see here you can see the signal coming along and then it abruptly stops and there's nothing coming out and you can see the control voltage for the pin diode coming along and dropping here so if we set our first cursor I'm 
me magnify this. Let me zoom in here. So I'll set my first cursor to when the the uh, pin diode, the control voltage for the pin diode drops. And then my second cursor I'll move to when the signal goes completely to zero. And we can see the time there is about 300, 350 microseconds. So it takes about 350 microseconds for the last of the signal to bleed through the transmitter board. So now I'm going to measure the isolation between receive and transmit. So I have got the uh, transmitter now connected to the receiver. So this cable is going into connecting the antenna port of the receiver to the uh, transmitter port here which is connected to the uh, low pass filter and to the antenna. So now I'm going to turn on the transmitter, feed a signal through and we'll look at the output coming out of the amplifier uh, to see how much signal we've got uh, bleeding through. So I've got scope 2, uh, scope probe 2 connected to the output of the uh, low pass filter and I've got scope probe 1 here connected to the output of the final low noise amplifier that's uh, connected to the uh, crystal filter. So my scope is set to continuous uh, uh, trigger so right now um, the there is no signal coming out of the uh, transmitter there's a zero signal and so what I'm seeing here that's just noise that uh, um, that scope probe uh, one is picking up uh, coming out of the uh, receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the transmitter now. So there the transmitter is turned on and you can see uh, scope probe two is showing a uh, voltage coming out of the uh, low noise amplifier and you'll see here there is a little bit more noise there is some noise bleeding through, there is some signal bleeding through the system, but it's uh, not significantly uh, much. So the, the uh, pin diodes I've got uh, on the receiver is doing a really good job of isolating that uh, transmitter uh, signal. So there it is with the transmitter on, and here it is with the transmitter off.